Ahoy hoy, I'm Planner Walk, and I've been putting off making this video for a while now. I'm usually fine with admitting that I'm wrong, but seeing as I've been so adamant that I've been right for about two years now, it's a lot harder to admit. So this video is about how I have been wrong, and Ken Wheeler was right about the principles of magnetism and dielectricity. Now, there are a couple of things that I do have to mention before we get started. The first being that just because I agree with Ken Wheeler on some things now, doesn't mean that I agree with him on everything. And the second thing is, there are a few things that Ken Wheeler says that I am having a hard time wrapping my head around. And I'm going to mention them later in the video. If you understand what I'm talking about when I bring those up, please do try and help me out with understanding them. So I should probably start out by talking about Dunning-Kruger. Most people will probably know what that is, but if you're not familiar with it, Dunning and Kruger is essentially a illusory superiority bias, where you overestimate your ability in a particular field or subject, even though you only have a little bit of knowledge. Now, when I tried to debunk Ken Wheeler, I was essentially using a very limited amount of knowledge, which, if you want people to take you seriously, you should probably try and have, you know, a bit more expertise than, oh, I heard this person say this, so therefore it must be right. You see, when Ken would explain how gravity is sourced in mass of magnetic expulsion from the dielectric, I would just dismiss that as word salad because it didn't align with the knowledge that I had. It is very easy to just dismiss something that you don't actually understand, not because you don't understand it of course, but because the science says that it's wrong even though you may not fully understand what the science is saying either. So people are probably wondering, what changed my mind on all this? And I'll tell you what, people coming to my channel and saying, you know, stop hating on Ken Wheeler, stop making videos about Ken Wheeler, or you're just trying to get subs from Ken Wheeler, uh, that did not change my mind in the slightest, that didn't even contribute towards it. In fact, it probably kept me in my view a bit longer. Because, to me, it looked like someone with no arguments was just looking for a reason to dismiss mine. That's all it looked like to me. So the thing that actually changed my mind was a video put out by Derek Muller of Veritasium. This video was titled, The Big Misconception About Electricity. And initially, this video just broke my brain. I had a hard time wrapping what I thought was true about electricity and magnetism with the video, what that was saying was true about electricity and magnetism. However, when I sort of framed it through a more a lens of using things like counter space and the ether, that actually surprisingly made more sense to me, especially with the video. In addition, the video does mention people that I know that Ken Wheeler has cited in the past, including James Clark Maxwell and Oliver Heaviside. You see, this goes back to when I was talking about Dunning-Kruger earlier. Ken Wheeler has clearly read James Clark Maxwell and Oliver Heaviside. I haven't. So what makes me think that I'd have more knowledge in the subject than Ken Wheeler, when Ken Wheeler has read more about the subject than I have. Am I really supposed to believe that Ken Wheeler has just misunderstood everything that he's read about, and that my limited understanding of modern science somehow trumps that? But getting back to the Veritasium video, the main thing that I have to say that convinced me is, when you stop viewing electricity as electrons, but instead as magnetic induction via pressures of dielectric inertia, everything that was said in that video makes a whole lot more sense. See, when the video talked about how the current isn't actually carried from electrons, and it had a few very nice diagrams, it was clearly showing the magnetic induction from electrification 
which can be explained by the nature of the dielectric. Now, just because that makes sense to me, doesn't mean that everything that Ken Wheeler says uh, makes sense to me. But I am willing to try and learn and to try and understand what Ken Wheeler means. So if you are someone that does understand what Ken Wheeler talks about, then can if you can please just try and answer these questions, that would be greatly appreciated. So the first question that I have is, if the ether is an extremely simple phenomena of space without needing modalities, then how does nothing within space itself touch every aspect of space? My second question is, counter space is necessitated by particles themselves, but how does this fact explain the dielectric inertial plane which itself cannot produce particles? So I think I'll just keep it to three questions because some answers to some questions may give me insight into other questions that I might have. But the last question is, the magnetic vortex architecture within space that imminently increases motion seems contradictory to the nature of magnetic divergence of magnetic induction. How do you reconcile these? How, how are these two things reconciled? If someone could just answer those questions for me, that would be greatly appreciated. Or if you know someone that could answer those questions, getting them to answer those questions would also be greatly appreciated. For 2022, I'm going to try and make a decent effort to understand electricity and magnetism, particularly how things like electrical components work, because I've always had an interest in how all the inner workings of a computer actually work. So understanding all this stuff will be important to understanding how things like computers work, how circuits work, and all that kind of jazz. I am going to, of course, have to do a lot more reading than I normally do, but I have already started, and if I keep to just, say, 10 pages a day, every day, then I should be able to slowly build up an understanding. And also, if I do it every day, then, you know, the knowledge that I have from what I read the previous day should carry over. Consistency is key, right? But that's it for this video, and this video is it for the year for me. It'll be interesting to see what happens in 2022, or even the remainder of 2021, although there's not much that can happen. I suppose the comment section is a thing that can happen, which I'm not too sure I want to check despite my reliance on it to have the questions that I posed in this video answered. But hey, if this video is meant to illustrate anything, is that if I'm wrong about something, I'm open to changing my mind. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching. Now, cue all the comments about leakage current. That's going to be something that I will for certain see in the comments section.